Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Shomus Biology. In this series of lectures, we are talking about uh, electrophoresis methods and this video is all about pulse field gel electrophoresis. So, so simply we are going to talk about pulse field gel electrophoresis, PFGE, pulse field gel electrophoresis. And in pulse field gel electrophoresis method, why we need pulse field gel electrophoresis in the very first place, that's what we are going to discuss. Remember, in electrophoresis, we are basically separating mixture of charged molecules based on their charge and mass or the charge density using uh, either liquid medium or a solid matrix made with either polyacrylamide or made with agarose. Now in this case of pulse field gel electrophoresis is introduced in a case where, where normally the agarose gel fails. See the agarose gel electrophoresis is used to separate DNA, right? Because DNA carries, uh, DNA carries negative charge and uh, the agarose gel has pores in it. The pores are bigger through which the DNA can enter and exit, okay? Now, if the DNA is negatively charged, the DNA will migrate from minus end to the plus end towards the positive end, okay? So it will move and migrate towards the positive end. And as this movement, again, depending upon the length of the DNA, shorter DNA will migrate further, longer DNA will migrate less. Now the question is, this agarose gel is good to separate DNA strands which are near up to 50 kilobases. But more than that, becomes very difficult for the agarose gel to separate or resolve the mixture of DNA which are more than 50 kb in length. So for those DNA fragments which are more than 50 kb in length, so more than 50 kb but near or less than 10 mb can be resolved well utilizing pulse field gel electrophoresis. Right? So pulse field electrophoresis is used to separate a mixture of DNA fragments which are more than 50 kb and less than 10 mb. Now the question is how do you do that? You know, have you asked yourself how is it possible? The answer is that in this method there is nothing extraordinary about the gel. The gel is the same old agarose gel. It is the agarose gel. But in this agarose gel the electrophoresis will be done using the agarose gel but the electric field that we apply based on which the charged particles like DNA will migrate will alter. In this case the electric field that we will apply will alter the path from time to time. With different time we can alter the path and as we alter the path with different time that will change or that can easily separate DNAs which are bigger. Okay, so what do you mean by alteration of charge or alteration of path here? Okay, so for this you need to understand the simple idea that let's say th this this pulse field gel electrophoresis is generally conducted in a box which is hexagonal like this. Okay, and in this hexagonal box we have this gel right, the gel is placed and what we have we have negative charges here and here positive charges uh, positive charge electrodes here and here. So four electrodes are placed two negative and two positive in here and actually it's a metaphor that we have four electrodes because multiple electrodes can be placed but all negative and all negative this side all positive all positive this side okay even more than one number of negative and positive electrodes can be used now the idea is we load the gel right and what we allow is that basically we call it pulse field right so we apply pulse of electric field with rotating frequency of time what I mean by that is that, let's say the very first pulse. So you're talking about first pulse. In the first pulse, the direction of movement is from this minus to the plus, because obviously DNA is negatively charged, so it will move towards the positively charged. So from this minus to this plus, this is the movement, first pulse. Then we move to second pulse. So this is the movement, first pulse movement. Then we have second pulse movement. In the second pulse movement, the movement is from this negative to this. This is second, this is first. Okay. So due to this net movement, what we have a angle and that is 120 degree angle. In this particular picture, we are looking at 120 degree angle. Now the time difference between first and second pulse is 90 seconds. Let's say in this case is 
90 seconds difference between first pulse and second pulse okay first pulse continue to 90 seconds then second pulse 90 seconds again third pulse 90 seconds fourth pulse so every 90 seconds gap we have different pulse and it changes direction via 9, 120 degree angle and that how that's how it's going on and this process will continue for 24 hours sometimes 36 hours sometimes 48 hours depending upon the resolution we can continue this 24 to 48 hours duration remember that continues to 24 to 48 hour of duration very important and this helps us to separate larger fragment of the dna more than 50 kb length of the dna near about 10 mb length of the dna now the question is why and how right we understood why it is used but the question is how how come changing in the field of electricity alters and helps us to segregate larger fragment of the DNA. How is it possible? The idea is that whenever the electric field is applied, the DNA, the DNA structure, we can say the shape of the DNA alters. DNA need to realign itself to the field of electricity that is applied. Okay. So every single time there is an electric field applied, the DNA gets elongated. Try to understand. Electric field applied for the first time, first pulse, the DNA gets elongated, stretched. And then again, once the pulse is altered, it's off to the different angle. Then again, the DNA must come back to the earlier conformation. That is the natural conformation of the DNA. The moment we shift from one pulse to the other, the DNA need to come back to the unstretched state or unelongated state. Right? And the bigger the length of the DNA, the more time it will take for the DNA to come back to the native conformation after a pulse. So now try to get this factor. This is the most important factor. DNA gets elongated when we apply electric field, then it shifts back. Right? It needs to shift back to a unelongated state. Unelongated state shifts back to the unelongated state. Once done, then again another pulse elongated. Then again back to unelongated state. And this process can continue. This process can continue. And this is why we change the pulse. Every single time we change the pulse, change in elongation and back to the earlier conformation so that it can realign itself, realign the axis of the DNA to the electric field. And this is very, very important. That's why in first field gel electrophoresis, what we can clearly see is this movement with a particular angle. In this picture, we see 120 degree angle it may be different angles more than 90 degree obviously but they change the angle that helps us to resolve dna fragments which are lengthier right that's all about pulse field gel electrophoresis if you like this video please hit the like button share this video to your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye